Good morning, students. Today we will start with solution chapter in chemistry. In your old book, you will see the name as relative molecular mass and mole. So what do you mean by solution? A solution consists of a solvent and a solute. Today we will start with colligative properties. So what do you mean by colligative properties? The physical properties of solution which directly depend on the number of solute molecules present within the solution but not on their shape, size, nature, etc. are termed as colligative properties. So stress on the word number and solute particles. In our syllabus, we have four examples of colligative properties. The first one, relative lowering of vapor pressure. Number two, elevation of boiling point. Number three, depression of freezing point. And number four, osmotic pressure. Now let me ask you one question. Which of the following is a colligative property? A. Vapor pressure B. Boiling point C. Freezing point D. Osmotic pressure E. All of these Our answer will be D. A. That is vapor pressure is not a colligative property. Relative lowering of vapor pressure is a colligative property. B. Boiling point Boiling point cannot be a colligative property, but elevation of boiling point is a colligative property. C. Freezing point. Freezing point is not a colligative property, whereas depression of freezing point is a colligative property. So our answer, once again I am repeating, is D. In this section, we will study about ideal and non-ideal solutions. We know that a solution consists of solute molecules and solvent molecules. We are designating the solute molecules as 2 and the solvent molecules as 1. You can also name them as B and A as your choice. We have three types of interactions in a solution. The first one, solvent-solvent, that is 1-1, one, one. solute-solute, 2-2, two, two and solute solvent 1 2 if all these three interactions are identical then the solution can be termed as an ideal solution if one of this interaction is not same as the other two then the solution is termed as non ideal solution a solution can be termed as ideal if it obeys any one of the following three conditions. The first one, an ideal solution should obey Raoult's law. We will come to Raoult's law in our next section. From thermodynamics, for a solution to be ideal, it should have delta V mix is equal to zero and delta H mix is equal to zero. That means an ideal solution in terms of thermodynamics is defined as a one in which no volume change and enthalpy change takes place on mixing the solute and the solvent in any proportion. The third one is the molecular interaction. Just now we have discussed that. Once again, I'm repeating. An ideal solution is a solution where solvent solvent, solute solute and solute solvent interactions are identical. Our first colligative property is relative lowering of vapor pressure. For that, we should first know what is vapor pressure. Let us consider a liquid which is allowed to evaporate in a closed container. That means we will not allow the liquid molecules or the vapor molecules to escape into the air. A stage is reached when an equilibrium is established 
between the liquid and the vapor. At this point, the, a pressure is exerted by the vapor in equilibrium with the liquid at a given temperature on the surface of the liquid. And the pressure exerted by the vapor in equilibrium with the liquid at a given temperature is called the vapor pressure. <clears throat> now we will see the kinetic manifestation of vapor pressure. As the number of molecules that escapes from the surface of the liquid to form the vapor increases, the vapor pressure also increases. That means more the escaping tendency of the liquid molecules to escape from the liquid phase to the vapor phase, more will be the vapor pressure. Now, how vapor pressure and temperature is related? Vapor pressure is directly proportional to temperature. As we increase the temperature, the kinetic energy of the liquid molecules also increases. That means there is a greater tendency of the liquid molecules to escape from the liquid phase to the vapor phase. That means the vapor pressure increases. Let us see this equation. P is equal to N by VRT is equal to CRT. From this relation, we can easily tell that vapor pressure and temperature is directly proportional to each other. Our first colligative property is relative lowering of vapor pressure. For this purpose, let us prepare a solution. How we will prepare the solution? We will add a non-volatile solute to the pure solvent. When a non-volatile solute is added to a pure solvent, the vapor pressure of the resulting solution is lowered. Since the solute is non-volatile, it will have negligible contribution towards the vapor pressure of the solution. The vapor pressure of the solution is therefore merely the vapor pressure of the solvent. P0 is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent whereas P is the vapor pressure of the solution. Since the vapor pressure of the solution is lowered, we can write P0 greater than P Delta P is equal to P0 minus P, where delta P is the lowering of vapor pressure. Now, what is relative lowering of vapor pressure? This relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to P0 minus P by P0. That means delta P divided by P0. Now, we will study Raoult's law. The relative lowering of vapor pressure of a solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solute present in the solution. Now, relative lowering of vapor pressure is P0 minus P by P0. According to Raoult's law, this P0 minus P by P0 is equal to X2. What is this X2? X2 is a mole fraction of the solute. How we will calculate the mole fraction of the solute? Let small n1 be the number of moles of solvent, whereas n2 is the number of moles of solute. So mole fraction is equal to number of moles of the solute divided by number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent. Hence, X2 is equal to N2 divided by N1 plus N2. Now, for a very dilute solution, N1, that is number of moles of the solvent, is much greater, greater number of moles of the solute. Hence, we can assume N1 plus N2 approximately equal to N1. So, this P0 minus P divided by P0 becomes equal to N2 by N1. With this, 
we come to the end of this class. In our next class, we will discuss how to determine the molecular weight of a solute using relative lowering of vapor pressure. Till then, keep studying. Stay well. Thank you.